again after what seems like forever and actually it's probably only two weeks three weeks now but that's just because things just happen Yeah, I started filming a couple of weeks ago. I've done a lovely section on digging up the onions. Um, I've harvested all my beans, uh, well, broad beans. I've harvested my peas. I've been taking care of the tomatoes. And yeah, all on film. But you know what? I just started to film myself uh, planting the celery last week and the camera fell off the tripod. And that was it. That was it then, kaput. Suddenly thought, you know, shall I get another camera? Can I get it repaired? What can I do? Followed loads of um, YouTube videos on how to repair your own camera. But having gone down that route before, I knew it wasn't for me. And uh, so yeah, things were on hold for a little bit really. Plus there have been issues outside the allotment that have been going on that have prevented me getting here. But uh, yes, I am here now. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna show is uh, some of those clips you don't want to see them all they've been and gone now um i'll show you my onions i'm going to show you my new little celery bed i'm going to plant some carrots yes about a month after everybody else has planted carrots i'm going to plant carrots because i can and um hello hello what do you think he thinks i'm talking to myself again which i probably am in fact i actually am and <laughs> But first of all, just to sort of reassure you out there that um, whenever you look at, he's just knocking things over with his lead. There goes the kale. To reassure you, uh, people out there who look at our allotments or look at my allotment perhaps and think it's all, you know, oh, it's ticking over really beautifully. I'm going to show you my bed of shame. Okay, for direct comparison here, these are the outdoor tomatoes. They're mainly Gardener's Delight and you can see they've been side shooted, they've been tied up to canes, they've been generally looked after. Okay, let's look at the next bed. Okay, bed number one over there. Bed number two. Oh dear. It's disappeared. The tomatoes were planted at exactly the same time but we also planted in some courgettes and some lettuce and some nasturtiums and then that meant that we couldn't get to the tomatoes to tie them up or to side shoot them or basically to do anything to them so we just yeah we just forgot about them really um and yeah the thing is though what gets me i'm going to unhook you here and show you considering it's had no care at all wibbly wobbly whoop. that's what rocky thinks of it all um these ones are actually doing really well so i mean we don't know what this tomato is this was one that was just left as a spare on the table at the uh, allotment gates. There were a couple of spares, so if you think you know what that might be, do let me know. But actually, the more you look in, and I don't, oh, look, there's, look at that one. Ah, you see, I wonder, oh, heavens. Oh, <laughs> it's a weird one. It's a weird tomato, let's just notice that. But actually, yeah, the more you look, the more you can see, and I think, not only are they doing better than the ones in the supposedly prepared bed, but I think they're doing better than some of the ones in the greenhouse. So, yeah, let's not be too kind to these things. Look, I've got my sun girls there again, more sun girls, and the truss is on that. I don't know, maybe I'm just surprised because anything's coming at all, but to me, I'm not in a hurry to tidy this all up as you can possibly tell. <laughs> I think it's doing all doing quite well on its own. So yeah, sometimes leaving things to get on with it can work. Now don't get me 
wrong? I'm pretty sure that looks like a very fine marrow. But I didn't plant any marrows. And right next to this bit here, I've got the, um, the label. Squash Queensland Blue. Okay, let's look at that picture. Mm -hmm. And then let's just look at what we've actually got there for comparison. It's a marrow, isn't it? Has anyone grown squash Queensland blue? Is that how they start off? Hmm. What's gardening like, eh? Forever thrown surprises. And the old marrow. I found the first of the Uchikikuri. I'd love to know if that's the way you pronounce it, you know, but yeah, that's getting a good size on it now. And what I do love about these fruits is the colours are, I mean, that's yellow, but that will probably turn to a deep, deep orange and then almost red before it's ripe. And uh, you can just see the telltale stripes starting to form on it there. Absolutely beautiful. So pleased with that. And look what else I've just found in the undergrowth. It's our first Cheeky Prince. So those of you who don't know about Cheeky Prince, I'm sure most of you do, um, Paul and Richard, Richard and Paul, sent out some seeds that were from a cross between a Uchikikuri and a Crown Prince that they had last year in their garden. So they've sent seeds everywhere and we're all planting them to see how they turn out, whether they actually come true to either of the varieties or just stay a mix. And look, that's doing really well. And I swear that wasn't here last time I came up and that was only a couple of days ago. So it's certainly put on a few, a few inches since I last came up. Yeah, first cheeky. Woohoo! So there they are. A week since the camera flying incident, I have my little winter harvest of self-blanching celery. Apparently it's not crispy like um, your ordinary trenching celery, but that's going to be fine. It'll be lovely to have the taste of celery in some winter soups and stews. Okay, what I've got here is the bed just um, adjacent to the celery bed, as I'm now calling it. And this is where we recently dug up the potatoes, which is why I've got these, uh, the dud potatoes that didn't make at home. More shame, you see, more shame, haven't been cleared away. They're still in a pile there waiting to go on the compost. Do you compost your potatoes? What do you do with them? I mean, the ones you're not going to eat, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, I think they're going to go on the compost. Anyway, so this, yeah, this bed originally had our first leeks that we put in. Let's take those off. Put in, was it this time of year? It must have been last year. And they all got the Allium leaf miner. We also planted the broad beans, um, of which I think two plants came. And that's because the soil was too rich, because we'd enriched the soil so much thinking we were doing it good that uh, basically it was too rich for the seedlings. But then we put the potatoes in and we had, I don't know if you saw the last video, we had a wonderful crop of new potatoes. So now I think it's ready for the carrots. Um, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't do well here. It's actually, this is going to be my permanent vegetable bed, but until I get some permanent vegetables, I'm putting the carrots in. So, carrot. This one is called Amsterdam Forcing. Now, it says so April to August. I'm sorry, I'm going to sneeze. Right into the microphone. <laughs> Bless me. I might have to cut that bit out. Yes, carrots. Amsterdam Forcing. It says very sweet and some think because that was left out in the rain fortunately they're in a little foil packet it says so april to august now for those of you who know your carrots you can carry on sowing them sort of you know yeah end of july but i reckon we can still do these now um so if i look at how many seeds i think we've got approximately 1000 it's going to be more of a, a sprinkle affair than count them out so all I'm going to do 
And this is dead, dead simple. I've got my little onion hoe. I'm so accustomed if he knows now. Do you have got hay fever? Let me just tell you a little bit about this soil as well before I do. I'm just going to have to. Hold on. Yeah. Um, this is topped with hops. And again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to go and blow my nose. Uh, remember at school when you used to do it on your sleeve, or I did anyway, I was one of those kids. Um, yeah, last year we topped most of our edged beds with hops that we got from the local brewery, which was great because you can see they just they just go down to, to nothing. They, well, I'm saying to nothing, I mean, you can see how floaty they are there. Can you? Is the camera picking that up? But what that does mean is when you put them on, again, they're quite rich. So don't, like we did, go putting your, you know, new seeds in it. Bear that in mind. If you're planting direct, make sure your soil is fit for seeds because, again, using the uh, Lady at the Garden Centre's little analogy, it's like even a baby steak and chips. So you can kill them with kindness. Anyway, yeah, so it's got the hops on top, which are basically breaking down and adding to the soil structure, which is what we want. We want to make this soil, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so back to the onion hoe. I'm just gonna make a little drill. I mean, it says so about, I'm gonna take that stone out. Ooh, dear, don't want that. Um, I'm gonna go to about, let's put that in there. To about that stick and I'm basically oh I might do a bit more actually just going to do a couple of rows you can see it's actually nice and damp the thing is with the hops they really dry out on the top as well um, and then I'm going to do another row with it just the corner of my hoe doing it all by eye I'm hoping we've got all the potatoes out oh there we go speak too soon Teeny tiny potato, of course, that'll be a big potato plant next year. There's bound to be some left in. I think even if you think you've got everything out, you're going to find some. So yeah, basically one row of carrots, two rows of carrots. And what I'm going to do, because I'm a little bit organised this time, I'm going to make sure it's deep enough. Again, you don't want it too deep. They're only tiny, tiny little seeds. But with doing it with the corner of that, I'm creating like a tiny trench. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to water the little trenches first because, oh look, tiny again, tiny, tiny, tiny potato. So there we go. There we are. A couple of those little stones out. Again, you don't really want your carrots in stony ground which is why I want to do it in one of these beds because we at least know that the soil in these beds is a lot better than in our rotational beds. Uh, we have got carrots up there most of them have gone to seed but um, the the actual soil in the ground is so stony. So anyway yeah and now I'm going to dribble dribble in my trenches so I know that the carrots Oh, that's a lovely straight line, Jane. I know that the carrots are going to be in contact with some nice damp soil. Let's see the concentration on my face here. The problem is, of course, you don't want it... the trenches to collapse on themselves. And that's it. Carrot seed in cover. Come back in a few months' time and they're all lovely, healthy carrots. If only life was that simple. So yeah, you can do all sorts of different techniques to help you um, space your carrots out. You can put, um, in fact I should have done, um, put a, a little handful of radish seeds in with them so you can see the lines, but I'm not going to do any of that. Ah dear, I'm going to, tiny tiny seeds, teeny tiny, not careful they'll all blow away and I'm literally going to sprinkle. I've dribbled and now I'm going to sprinkle. <laughs> Doesn't sound right does it? Yeah as thinly as possible because what you do not really want to be doing with your carrots is um, thinning them out too much because 
that will disturb the soil. I've just seen a little potato and disturbing the soil will release the lovely carroty smell and that will attract the dreaded carrot fly and we don't want that after everything else we've had. So um, yeah that's the other thing if you are companion planting which I'm hoping to do more of next year's another one blooming heck these are the size of tiny peas these little potatoes <sighs> but from tiny peas big potatoes grow. Um, yeah, if you wanted a companion plant, you could put something like leeks or onions or anything from the onion family or really anything that's strong scented to take away from the carroty smell. But I'm not doing that because I haven't brought my seeds down with me. So yeah, the other way of doing it when it comes to thinning, and I've seen Vivi do this, which I think might be the way I'll go because I thought it was very, very clever and very inspiring as ever, is rather than pulling out the weaker seedlings just a tiny little bit of um, tiny pair of scissors so a pair of nail scissors or something with a very fine end and just go and snip the tops off the ones that you don't want basically and leave the bigger ones in you can do it that way if you're going to do it that way try and make sure you do it sort of later on in the evening before um so yeah the carrot fly is not going to be buzzing around oh look at that you see oh i'm gonna to have to sprinkle those in there um you've also got the charles dowding way of just growing everything nice and thickly and take out your thinnings as young carrots take out your thinnings eat them and leave the other ones in to grow so various different ways of approaching it really but yeah i've got my two rows in there don't know how many hundreds of thousands I've just planted and how many have just blown out of my hand all over the trench but all I'm going to do now is my little onion hoe again seems wrong using an onion hoe for carrots oh hey this is where these will come in handy that marks that line and that marks that line right I'm going to cover these up very gently I've raked the soil beforehand she says bashing it with the onion hoe I've raked the soil beforehand so it's fairly fine I know that they're watered underneath that they're touching nice damp soil and they're about half three quarters of an inch deep there and really that's it I will because I'm not companion planting I will end up putting some sort of cover over these just because of the fly um, but yeah I've just got to do the other side there and hopefully We'll have some carrots. Okay, there we go. Two rows of Amsterdam, whatever they were, carrots. Um, you can see I've actually carried on to make two longer rows rather than coming across because I thought about the actual shape and size of the tunnel, which just fits over just perfectly. So yeah, there we go.
there you go. If you've got to this bit, and if I've got to this bit, it means that it's um, the rest of the video making has gone without incident. So let's <laughs> hope that you'll see this at some point. Oh my goodness, it's fraught. It can be really fraught. I mean, those of you who do um, your videos, or maybe not about your allotment, but about anything, you know, you think you've got a whole load of footage and you go home and either you haven't switched your mic on or your battery ran out halfway through, or you, you know the feeling. But yeah, to have your camera actually just jump off a tripod in front of you, I just thought that was a bit rude. So, um, but we're back, we're back. And actually this new camera now that I'm pointing at, is um is, is slightly better quality i think it, well it is it's a 4k so hopefully it should make the um the pitch quality a little bit better so some of this video will have the old footage some will have the new so see if you can spot the difference but but yeah it's been another glorious day as it seems to be yeah we've had quite a few of these now we've had this incredible heat which i'm not a fan of in that um it can be very very humid not as much as it was a couple of weeks ago when we were reaching like 36 37 degrees but still quite humid at night There's cabbage white butterflies everywhere um so i am keeping an eye on the um the tomatoes <laughs> even the ones in my bed of shame for blight because yeah i am i've mentioned it before i've signed up for um blight watch uk and you just get messages through your email to say if uh the weather forecast in your area is going to be conducive to blight so just to keep an eye on things and that seems to be happening more or less daily at the moment so yeah keeping an eye on them speaking of butterflies i was reading um in the news the other day that we apparently we've got this influx of painted lady butterflies are they they're the brown ones with like the orange tips and i've got to say i don't know if i'm just focusing on them now because um because they were in the news but i'm seeing so many of them walking through the fields on the way here today and just walking through the field on pretty much a dirt path they were everywhere you know you had to be careful not to stand on them so are we being invaded or is our butterfly population just writing itself it's certainly writing itself over there in our brassicas there's a few tinkers of cabbage whites going on over there but but yeah let me know if you had an influx of butterflies in your area if you're not in the UK, have you had a problem with butterflies? Let me know. It's lovely to see them anyway. But yeah, yeah, we've found, you'll notice my table, usually this time of year, considering we are in, I would say still not full swing of harvest. I'm certainly not. I know a lot of you are, but um, our harvesting of late has been more of a trickle of things turning up at home. So the odd courgette, my aubergine which i was very very proud of um yeah the the sun gold tomatoes but i've got to say though to be honest those sun gold tomatoes the little yellow ones if you're growing them they are absolutely beautiful but you can do your harvest for a day and it sort of fits in your hand so it's sort of if you feel like well it's quite a lot of effort there for quite a small amount small and very sweet amount of um reward but I think next year I'm certainly going to grow more standard sized tomatoes. I've got my Amish paste, which are starting to come now in the greenhouse. I have got some Gardener's Delight, but again, they're on the smaller side outside. So yeah, that's a note to myself to next year, sort of put some larger ones in. So yes, speaking of tomatoes. Um, oh, let me see if I've got it, hold on. Excuse me, Rocky. Many of you are facing this problem at the moment. Let's see if I can bring it up to the uh, camera. Hold on. Can you see that? Blossom end rot. You get it on your tomatoes, you can get it on courgettes, you can probably get it on a whole host of other things which I don't know too much about. But yeah, that was my first Amish paste tomato in the greenhouse and I was so excited and it's one of these things that you don't realise until you actually um, reach in to scoop it out that you've got a bit of rot on the bottom. So I was reading up on it, there was a report recently on um, Tamara's Facebook page, uh, Tamara from the Swiss Plot, and she went into it in a lot more detail on a, a recent video. I will put a link to the video somewhere, probably down below. Uh, oh, uh, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, 
I'm basically talking about most people see blossom end rot as some sort of nutrient deficiency, which in a way it is, it tends to be a lack of calcium, but the way that it's traditionally been dealt with is that people will then dose their tomato plants with Epsom salts or some other sort of fixing nutrient. <laughs> So if you don't water it, it's all very well having your calcium in your soil and your tomato plant up there, but you need that bridge, that water. And if your soil's dried out, the little river of water, the little river of life from the calcium or the nutrients from the soil will not reach your tomato plants. So more often than not, it's to do with um, a watering issue than an actual nutrient issue. I mean, obviously, if your soil is very, very poor, then you are gonna have to add stuff, but I just thought it was really interesting. But yeah, do go over to um, tomorrow's page, Swiss Plot, and uh, have a little look, because it, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I don't think it's scientifically proven, I don't know if it's a scientific report, but it makes for interesting reading. So there we go. What would you do with that? Would you still eat the top bit? I don't know. I don't know if it's gone all the way through or not. Anyway, that's that. Butterflies, tomatoes, blossom end rot. I think I'm done. It's absolutely glorious. We are, this is Thursday now over in the UK. We are due for horrendous when i say horrendous i say that with a smile on my face because a horrendous thunderstorm is a delight to me i can't remember the name i'm not even going to try and say it because i'll probably get it wrong and be accused of something else but uh yeah we love storms storms in our house so um mike's away at the moment i don't know if you are on facebook on my allotment page you might see that he put a little um video postcard of an allotment he passed or an allotment site he passed in Germany and just saying how neat and tidy it was and how people treat them more like their front gardens. Absolutely lovely. But uh, he's away, which means that Anna and I are um, setting our alarm clocks for, what, well, we probably won't have to, but for whatever time the storm's going to hit in the middle of the night. It'd be a real damp squib if we don't get proper thunder and lightning because so often you look at your weather for the next day and it tells you exactly when your first lightning strike's gonna happen. And then as you get nearer that time, it moves further away and sort of fizzles to nothing. So I hope that's not gonna happen. The garden needs a really good drink. And as I said earlier, it's been so humid at night, we really need the air to clear. So that'll be a good thing. Saying that though, I'm gonna go around and check that uh, things are all quite secure. So my netting's all secure. Things aren't gonna fall over. Uh, yeah. Oh, one more thing though. I nearly went without this. This is thanks to Paul Savadont. He told me, or he said on a video recently about potting on side shoots from your tomatoes, because apparently he did it last year and he had some of his best tomatoes from <laughs> potted on side shoots. And if you think like if it's, um, a determinate, determinate, yeah, determinate or cordon tomato. You know, we concentrate on growing them tall, taking out the side sheets and throwing them away like they're no good at all. But look at this. I mean, this was a couple of videos ago. I stuck these, I mean, look at the size of the pot. I stuck these in a teeny tiny pot thinking, yeah, they might come to something. But okay, I'm showing you a dead bit. <laughs> Isn't that typical? Look at that though. One two, three, four new tomato plants formed there. Now, whether they will get the chance to form fruits and, you know, actually give me something before the frost hit or blight, whichever comes first, I don't know. But free plants, yeah, I'm going to stick them in. In fact, I'm going to do this before I go home. I'm promising myself I'm going to put them where the tidy tomatoes are. There's no room where the bed of shame is. I'll put them in with the tidy tomatoes and we'll just keep an eye on them because, I mean, look at the roots. They're crazy nonsense. So thanks, Paul. That was a top, top tip. So yeah, with that, with my defunct tomato and my tomatoes that are yet to come, I'm going to leave you on this beautiful, beautiful, sunny, warm, August afternoon and say hope you're having a lovely time wherever you are <sighs> yeah yeah get out in your garden get outside take in some fresh air it works wonders I'll see you soon bye